Not sure when you'll be watching this, but it's actually April 5th, 2022. Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today we are taking you through the step-by-step -step to install a water fuel separator and filter on your boat. This is a must-have nowadays with gas being high in ethanol, moisture getting into fuel more than ever, hoses getting eaten up, your fuel lines getting eaten up and passing debris through to your engine. Put one of these in line. This is actually a Tahatsu brand but the cool part is this housing is universal to just about every brand of filter that screws on. You put the date you installed it and you replace it once a year or once a season. Your engine's running funny. One quick place to check is right here. Dump this into a clear bottle. You can test your gas. The water will fall to the bottom of this to a certain point. Eventually it could fill and you end up getting some water in your fuel. Uh, but this is a fail safe to catch water in the bottom and also to catch debris. We're gonna take you through how to install this on your pontoon boat. You should have it on your fishing boat too. We're gonna to start with everything disassembled. So I have just my housing. This will bolt into the railing. It could be in the inside of the boat. It could be on the back of your boat. If your fuel tank's on the back, maybe you just have a portable tank. You can absolutely install one of these in line. Your primer bulb to fill this and push to your engine. It's easiest to have your primer bulb between the tank and the filter. So it pushes fuel through but it can work on either side. You could have your primer bulb right at the engine. It's just gonna take a few more pumps, especially the first time you fill the filter with fuel. We're gonna have four fittings. So we have two ins and two outs. So we have an incoming, an outgoing, an incoming, and an outgoing. I'm only gonna use one incoming and one outgoing. So included in the kit, in most kits you're gonna have that, are these brass nuts. These are just plugs. And I've gone ahead and put Teflon tape around just the top several threads, just a thin layer of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug. This is a 9 16 wrench or socket will fit this. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in so they're nice and snug. We're gonna plug one incoming and one outgoing. On this, it's gonna mount here. The fuel line is gonna come up and in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this inlet, which means I can plug the other inlet and this outlet, because the line's gonna go through and out the other side. I like to get them real snug. Make sure no fuel is gonna get out, but that Teflon tape is gonna help be a barrier too. And then our other pieces, you could do several types. You could do a straight barb fitting if you know your line's gonna go straight out to its destination. Uh, in this case, I'm coming up to the fuel tank, so I'm gonna use a 90 degree elbow. These are all on this motor, it's 3 8 inch diameter, inner diameter hosing. We're running this fuel line about 10 feet. We had to get a long piece, so I wanna make sure I have plenty of fuel flow. Uh, you can always look up your manufacturer specs on how big a fuel line and how much you're able to run. This is just going to thread in and I'll end up tightening it and I'll orient it so it's pointed down. We're going to do the same on the other side just a second here. It helps to have a flat surface that you can use some leverage against to get this tightened. I'll tell you, if you have a pontoon with a transom mounted fuel tank, friends of mine who are outboard mechanics are seeing it more and more water in the gas and those transom mount fuel tanks tend to have a reputation. One last line of defense, why wouldn't you invest in it? My fuel is gonna come from my tank into the incoming arrow incoming it will go down in the filter up and around and out the outgoing that's ready to be mounted to the railing already believe it or not I do like to before I mount anything to the railing just because it's easy to do off the boat is I will take this these typically if you can get a good grip on them and hand tighten them you'll be just fine otherwise uh, you could use a one of the filter wrenches work really well but always if you want to ever get them off Put a little bit of oil 
whatever you got. I mean, four stroke oil, two stroke oil, some sort of oil. I use four stroke oil just because I have a gallon laying around here. And just rub it around that rubber ring. It's gonna seat up in here real snug. We wanna be able to get that off down the road. Just flip my oil jug upside down, get some in the lid, take the lid off, and then just make sure you'll see that rubber change color to a darker, shinier seal. A Benny D quote for you. If a little bit's good, a lot's better. I'm not sure if that applies here, but gotta always give the Benny D quotes when we can. Yeah, I suppose you could fill this with fuel before putting it on. I don't wanna make a mess on the boat. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm gonna prime it until I get fuel into it and through to the motor. But I'm nice and snug now. We'll go ahead and write the date. Not sure when you'll be watching this, but it's actually April 5th, 2022. I hope you're watching this years from now, maybe decades from now, learning how to install this on your boat. I hope you don't learn the hard way though and get water in your gas and finally buy one, get it. I don't know if we talked about cost on these. The fuel fittings, they can be anywhere from four or five bucks a piece. The plugs came with it. The whole thing is about 45 to $50. That includes the housing and the filter. Uh, so in reality, 60 bucks or so, you've got a security system. Next year, when my customer goes to change this, he's only gonna spend about 10, 15 bucks. There are some higher end filters and there are some that have a, a clear window. You can drain the bottom if you want to even, so you could see if there's moisture or test your fuel at any time during the season. Those will fit this as well. So shop around. This is a great system, gotta be on your boat. It might look like a little bit of mess in here, but there is a reason for everything. We've got our gas tank fastened to the floor on each side. I have my through deck grommet where my fuel line and also my fuel sending wire will go through down there. Water fuel separator, I've marked on the railing where it's gonna go. So we're gonna drill into where there's an indentation in the railing here. And I'm actually gonna run a 732nd drill bit. So slightly smaller than your quarter inch. And then what we do, because the aluminum is a little softer than the stainless steel, we'll run an inch long stainless steel quarter 20, big Phillips number three in, and that will hold everything in place that way I don't have to remove any seats or anything to install this. So first, first step, I'm gonna drill those holes so we can bolt this in. It's nice and flush or just below at the top here so my sun deck can close because this is all an enclosed space and a sun deck cushion will go over the top. I've got those two Phillips head bolts started and I'm just gonna finish them off. See, it's a little crooked, no worries, because there's a little bit of play here for me to straighten things out. And then we'll drive this one tight. Our next step is gonna be to run our fuel line from the pickup up into this inlet, and then we'll run our fuel line down through the floor back to the engine. I went ahead and chased my fuel line up through the floor. Got it capped right now. Uh, so tons of extra line here. I'm gonna actually snip it down. Luckily I have some extra hose here uh, that I can make my run from my pickup to my inlet for the water fuel separator. But I still wanna keep some slack in it. I don't wanna be pulling real tight. Uh, so we'll cut it about there. Got a nice soft bend down through the floor and then we'll get it uh, fastened up on this barb here. We've got that hose in place. Keep in mind, you can absolutely use a hose clamp, Oedeker clamp. These are actually Johnson Evinard zip ties and they're made, they're rounded. They're made to pinch down that hose. This thing is not going anywhere, barely even twists when you get them pulled down nice and tight. Uh, that's what you see on a lot of the new outboards right from the factory now for fuel connections. The last step before filling this with fuel from the primer bulb is to go ahead and connect my barb fitting down here, right up to my inlet fitting 
on the water fuel separator. And there we go. Connected into our inlet, into the filter, across, down through the floor. We chase along the pontoon into the transom. And voila. I do have a hose clamp, you can't quite see it, but I have a clamp that holds the fuel line to the transom with enough slack that we can turn the engine all the way both directions and still have some slack in the fuel line. We don't want to pinch that off by trying to get things too tight. So we did leave a little bit of slack there. I'm going to be pumping that primer bulb for probably, I don't know, probably 50 squeezes, uh, maybe more to get the fuel because this is brand new fuel line. If you already have gas in your line and your engine, to add a water fuel separator won't take so long. Always remember on your primer bulb, especially if you have a new hose where you're having trouble getting gas to your motor, you're not feeling that primer bulb firm up as you squeeze, turn the arrow vertically. So hold the primer bulb in a vertical position and that's gonna help make that fuel flow a lot more efficiently. Give that a try next time you're just priming your engine and see how quickly it helps pull fuel. Thank you for watching another episode. Hopefully you'll get a water fuel separator in on your boat. I gotta finish wrapping up this whole fuel tank install. So go check out our other videos. Please subscribe, comment if you're liking what you're seeing and let us know what you wanna see more of, please.